Hello, everybody. Welcome back to James and Flav for now. Um, Flav, could you do me a favor? Mm. Could you pop on to Google for me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just search. What could you search? You could search maybe the championship table for me. What did you play last night? A couple of days ago now. Still in the glow. Uh, just make your way uh, over. Uh, fourth. Hello. What's happening? Something's happening. I mean, Something. I can't, I wouldn't dare say such a thing. But what I will show you is the championship table. And if you beat Sheffield United away from home, mm. away from home, we were top mm. of the table. Yeah. That is wonderful, Jim. That's it. Back to back away wins. What? So, like QPR coming up here? All I'm saying is, there are, we are. Suff- I feel suffocated. I can't imagine how Mick Beal feels by the parachute payments that are surrounding us in the league table at this moment in time. So shame on them. Uh, well done, Reading. Like, I cannot get my head around. Reading, what's, what's everyone was certain Reading were going down. Everyone. everyone was, it was guaranteed. Couldn't really make any signings. Paul Lintz was manager. Turns out the guy's an absolute football genius. It's mad. Let's got minus two. What's that about? Did they get fumped by someone? Who? They were minus two goal difference. Did they get thumped by someone? Leicester. Reading. What are you talking about oh, Leicester Reading. for? Sorry, sorry. I don't know. I got confused. I didn't hear you say Reading. Um, we, you, you were literally, you brought Reading up. I know I was. <laughs> but I just, I didn't hear the word Reading. Uh, God, yeah, they have got minus goal difference. That is weird. They must have got had right, right, one, one really bad result, that generally means. Yeah, they got beat Hello. 4-0 by Rotherham, bizarrely. But oh, yeah, look, the important <coughs> thing is the boys are doing well. Although Chris Willock has got injured now, which does make me concerned. Can we keep this going? I don't know because it, there's Sheffield United with lots of cash, Norwich with lots of cash, Burnley with lots of ca- lots of cash. I mean, if you beat Reading tomorrow, go that's on. go on. I'll be well, at I mean, the game. Go on. I'm interested to hear what's your theory on that. Well, I think if you do beat them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's two big clubs on the bounce who you're competing with that you've taken maximum points off. Of. I think that's a good sign, Jim. Interesting. And the answer the QPR, the, the QPR, <laughs> interesting. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I think this is how we have to communicate now because we know what happened last year. I can't say anything. All I can do, though, is yeah. ask questions okay the qpr so of aren't... last year jim yes I, I i think they lose this game but not this qpr mm. well answer me jim. this if we beat reading on friday night at loftus road yes yeah. yeah um we'll be how many points will we get if we beat them you, you'll you'll get three points okay and, and that would take us up to how many points well, if you beat them by three goals you, you, well yeah you would take you up to 24 which would be joint top Okay. Effectively, uh, interesting. And if you beat by three, you'd be legitimately second above Norwich. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what. So, happens. so James, just I'm just asking you then. So the last time QPR <laughs> no, no, that's were... not how it works. I ask the questions. Don't do that. To okay. I know. Oh, go on. Go on. Go on, Jake. Well, no, well, all I'm just saying is it, this is not about you predicting whether or not your something is happening. It's asking the question: Is uh, is it as stressful as the last time where every game is like a cup final now, isn't it? Uh, I fell into this trap last year. This is the concern here. 12 games in. Um <laughs> and actually it's funny because we were talking we were talking oh, okay. ab- I was chatting to Rory about it yesterday and I was saying what's the amount of games where Arsenal fans have to to suggest have to uh, accept that they are title contenders. I was saying that like They're now right right now. He's saying right, right now. now. Did you know yeah, he absolutely. told me I'm mean, cheating to know how you feel about this. He told me that uh, Arsenal fans have changed the words of like "we're going to win the league" to "we're going to qualify for the Champions League." What? Yeah. That. Why? Because they've. they've well, how did, it doesn't even scan. Well, how, how have they done that? It doesn't I even just, scan. No, it's like it's like now you're gonna. I don't know what the song is. I haven't been to the Emirates this season. Okay, I'm just saying. That's. I'm well. I'm just intrigued to. It's not. Hear it's not. Um, like that. Champions League's overrated anyway. It's not even that good. Not feeling it. Not feeling it this year. Oh, it's all right. Nice to have a taste, isn't it? But then hmm, a bit rich. A bit rich for you. It's, it's, 
been, I mean, I've been so starved of it for so many years. Sure. It's like, for me, it's a bit passe, a bit obvious. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit obvious. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that irritating, though? It's like, I remember Villa Spurs saying, you've got to, like, do well to then get, like, panned by the press because you're playing in an elite competition. Whereas Arsenal are, <laughs> yeah. like, we are recording this before the, whoever they're playing, but they'll beat someone in the Europa League and, and it, they're like, wow, Arsenal are just killing it this year. Whereas, if you, of course, you'd be killing it if you're in, in the uh, Europa League, but you're not. You're in the Champions League. Yeah, indeed. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people uh, thought you were going to dodge talking about Tottenham this week. Is that going to happen? What do I you mean? Of, I tried to soften the blow into football chat. Well, I sort of just talking about the magnificence of Mick Beals, Queen's Park Rangers are playing just fantastic stuff with fullbacks push, pushing on, very similar to what Villa wanted to do, but didn't seem to have, they don't seem to have the answers in terms of the pattern of play this year. What's missing at Villa? I don't know, but his name well, might be Mick he... Beal. Um, <laughs> there's something's going on. It's isn't true. It? I, don't, I, don't, I feel odd because something, it's just like, I can, there's something happening. I'm just not exactly sure what's happening. But I, what I do know is that we're fourth in the league. I know. Yeah, well done. Well done, man. It's good. You, may, you should be excited. It's it's be excited. I mean, it's, it's, not as time. As, it's not as good as third. It's third in the league. No. All right, come on. We can talk about it. I don't care. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Well, look, Juan. Well, it, is a, it, it is a week on. It's it is fine. a week on. Um, Arsenal hmm. got a big game this week against Liverpool. Uh, preview will be on the channel tomorrow. Liverpool's defence is all over the shop, though, isn't it? Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's sort of. I don't know. This. They're a bit confused. Uh, Liverpool. And I wonder. It's when you start. They started changing <coughs> the formation against Rangers, and that could be the answer. But that could also be the like. You know, when you start, it starts going yeah. wrong. I always find this interesting. It's like the balance between when things start going wrong. Do you stick with it? Or do you change it? And either way, either way, as the only answer is improved results. <laughs> because like, if you don't improve results, you go, you've got to stick with the back four. You can't keep changing it every single week. Or the, I remember, the I remember like, Brendan... If you don't change it, it's not going to change. <laughs> Say fuck. Brendan Rodgers uh, had a sort of slight uptick in form. Um, is that an uptick or upturn? I don't know. Upturn. Uh, we have upturn got a Samazon is... by Deji this week, by the way. So stick okay. around. Uh, upturn in form uh, when he went to a three four three. I remember him talking specifically about that. Um, all I would say is <laughs> you um, can tell, tell us what he said. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Brendan Rodgers? Yeah, you said what? Well, you just, said change. You've got to change. Is that what you're saying? No, he, no. He's, I'm just saying. Well, he eventually got sacked, so it didn't work out in the end, did it? But but he 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 was. He, I think he was playing a four four two three one. Uh, uh, before and then he switched it to a three-four-three, and the, the, there was an upturn in form for Liverpool. But then, uptake. Um, people say in the chat. Uptake in form. That's not right. Uptick. I'm pretty sure uptick's in form. I'm, fucking, I'm, I'm sure right uptick's now. wrong. Uptake sounds better. Upturn also works for me. I'd let that one go. Upturn um, in form. Uptick. What the fuck? Maybe I was just thinking of that. Mm. I was just thinking of that. Oh, no. That's what happened in my brain. Um, anyway, look, he, he, so he changed it and he got a, a small amount of success, but it kind of resonates with, with me at the moment because obviously I'm talking about Spurs and Conte switching to the three five two, which a lot of Spurs fans are hanging on to because I get, we don't know anything, right? But we're just thinking, well, it's different and we have played well when we've played it before. So surely that's the answer when there's probably other things that are foot. Namely, actually, I don't know if you heard, there's like the, today our um, fitness coach died. He's 62. Okay. Um, the guy they called the Marine, and he he was well loved in the um in the Spurs dressing room apparently, and um, I wonder how much of that emotional impact that might have had on them. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're looking for this three four five two, but the only difference is it's not he's not experimenting Conte. He's won the league with Inter Milan with a three five two, so it's not like it's he's just I don't know what to do, so let's just play something. Let's yeah. just do anything new. It's a clear option. Yeah. But uh, I will say Arsenal were lucky to beat us. Very lucky. Interesting. Very, very, very fortunate. <laughs> fortunate. Yeah, fortunate. Go on. I don't know. Uh, well, I'm not explaining. I'm just saying. Just putting it out there. A lot of luck in there. That's a good one, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> well, like, it's this party score that goal like, one times in a hundred, maybe more, more, maybe one in five hundred that goes in, right? Then you know, 
we score a goal, we look much better than they do. We can, you know, we create chances. If we would have buried one there, the game would have been different. Loris makes some stupid mistake, like uncharacteristic mistake. Romero could have cleared, didn't, then rolled under his body and went in. So that was like really fortunate for them. Then Royale don't make, has a brain fart and gets sent off and then the game's over. Could have been different. Could have been very different, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. The okay. I don't want to pull at this thread too much. But I'll, I'll let you you've or, said look on uh, look, you've got to say you've got to say what's the you've got to be honest and you've got to be open. And fucking Saliba, he, he is a player that like either. Like it's I, I that was the first time I've watched Arsenal for ninety minutes this year. And um Fuck! Like, what was he? Why did they take so long to get him? In, get him back? Like, I get he's learning his learning his craft and stuff, but what what went on there? I I think something definitely went on there because it's like there's no. It's very um. Uh, like they were banging on about Gabriel and Gabriel, and he's twice the player he is. Yeah, twice I, I, the player. So yeah, exactly. So something was something was going on there, and it's easy to go, oh look, he needed this time to develop, blah blah blah. But it's not. Yeah, that. you don't you don't know. You're. I get why Arsenal fans are saying that they don't know what they're talking about in in that instance. No one does. So the, the there is, if that was the case, players nowhere near as good as Saliba have been have, have stayed at Arsenal. They so they didn't need to develop. They they're happy to be done do their developing inside in house. Something happened, and I'm saying. Real Madrid within eighteen months. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Is, is this the new thing? Is this the new thing to hold on to? Is that yeah? Okay, you enjoy your time in the sun, but you've got eighteen months, and then they're all getting just gobbled up they're by Man City up. and Real Madrid. Fingers crossed. Fingers and the crossed. rest. PSG, yeah, isn't it? I mean, this is the thing. Stinks of I've PSG, got... doesn't it? Stinks of. Uh, he wants. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see him going to PSG, can't you? Stinks of stinks of PSG. Honks of PSG. <laughs> Saliva <laughs> reeks of PSG. Um, the only saving grace here, right, is when when is that Arsenal hundred percent. He absolutely reeks. <laughs> honks, go, of be- honks of Pot, What's that? <laughs> Jesus Christ! You stink of PSG. God, I look uh, knackered. By the way. And I'm feeling fragile, um, right. as you know, and everyone who is a patron will know. We had the uh, paneer off last night, Vlav. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry and um, yeah, the paneer off. Uh, from here down, from sort of uh, nipples down, I'm feeling incredibly fragile. We can have a bit curry chat, but whilst we're speaking of um, below the waist, <laughs> this week's sponsor <laughs> of the podcast. Very good. <laughs> This week's sponsor of the podcast is those lovely people at Manscaped. Now, let me read. This is my favorite thing. I love it when we got sponsored by Manscaped because they write gorgeous copy that I can just read out and we can enjoy. So let's when, when, do that. When you read it, it is amazing because I, I, I read it this morning. And, and is did you read it in an American accent? No, I didn't, but I can. Do you want no, me to try that? No, 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 no. I don't think you should. But I just, okay. um, I, I, just I, I did when I was reading it. Okay, well, I'm going to struggle now. All right, anyway, welcome to Fresh Ball Fall. It's the season of pumpkin spice. Is that why? Was that the American bit? That's what yeah, it's, so, so. it's the season of pumpkin spice and making sure your crotch looks nice. <laughs> that means, this is my favorite, that means, of course, sipping cider in a full breeze and using Manscaped products to trim your balls with ease. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, today's show. Is brought to you by Manscaped, a company here to make sure that your foliage isn't the only thing shedding its excess leaves. Amazing. My, my favourite word of the copy coming up now. Here we go. Heck, even Mother Nature knows it's time to lose the excess clutter for fall. Join the six million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com uh, for 20% off plus free shipping with the code ALLCOT20. Do you know what? Well, um, I've I've been using Manscaped stuff uh, in a big way because the nose hair trimmer I lost um, or thought I'd lost, but I actually put it in this sort of toiletry bag. And then I went on holiday mm. recently and had a field day. And that, that was great because I'm starting to get, like, as someone who's quite um, boyish, certain <laughs> areas of my body are starting to grow a lot more hair these days. In particular the nose and 
I'm starting to get hairs on my ear. Yeah, man. Too late. I've I've been there for about a good five years. It gets just in the end the tough, doesn't it? And it's it's annoying because it's no, 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 no. This will blow your mind, right? Go on. It's I'm gonna have to take one off. It's like one hair on the corner bit. (laughs) What? Yeah. It's like this long, and it's grey. And I'm like, what is, what is that? Well, um, grow it out. Let anyway. me have a look. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Start, so I can twiddle them during the podcast. Anyway, with, it, <laughs> with your brand new or already with us at Manscaped, you could use the crown jewel of care for your family jewels, the Platinum Package 4.0. With the glorious package, you can align your entire hygiene routine all in one swoop. Inside the 10-part Platinum Package is everything you know and love about the performance package, plus some shower goodies included to elevate your grooming game to platinum. What level are you at currently, Flav? Uh, I would say I'm at gold because I haven't, um, I haven't, I'm, I'm due a, I'm due a trim up. Um, the thing is, is that when you've been in, like, I'm now married and, and been in a relationship for nearly nine years, and um, you know, it, you you. You would be forgiven for letting things go a little bit after nine years, but you you shouldn't. You got to put the work in, right? And 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 trimming your nether regions isn't the easiest thing to do, but it is pretty easy with manscaped, isn't it? It's just <laughs> yeah, and, nice. and and she deserves it or he deserves it. Like yeah. take care of yourself, present yourself in the best way, and you know you'll maintain a healthy sexual relationship. If you just let it go, <laughs> put on weight. And you've got this big bush with just a slight helmet poking out the end. No one wants to look at that. Yeah, yeah. think it through, guys, and uh, check out the link in the, <laughs> the description. Uh, so you got the Lawn Mower 4.0 body trimmer, the Weed Whacker nose and air, air hair trimmer for, for myself. Um, I had a little trim up before the holiday, of course, and uh, and, and went to fam. I went, look, and she went, thank you. It felt like a treat for her. Um, <laughs> this is nice. um, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen that. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you got the uh, premium body wash, ultra premium two in one shampoo and conditioner, and don't forget to apply the aluminium free ultra premium de- deodorant. Don't worry, it's not pumpkin spice, it's a cologne quality fragrance. So, as we said, uh, the uh, link is in the description. All cot 20, use that code for 20% off. And uh, get yourself. <laughs> just... What? So I've just got a mental image of you getting out of the shower just completely hairless like no, nothing and this little flaccid willy just bobbling around as you walk around. why'd you do that well, I'm... okay yeah. that's what i'm imagining uh manscaped uh, clear out the leaves it's your tree trunks time to shine uh there you go lovely stuff <laughs> no, that's, that is written down that is written down uh amazing <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, uh, let's. Uh, I've got. Do you know what? Quickly, just as we, I told people to hurry up. Give us some um, wrong, uh, wrong titles for for the podcast. So we'll read that in a second. But I'm going to do the uh, big uh, Jim Big Laugh Award, and I'm really gutted if I've even got to read this out. But it did, it, it did make me laugh. We've also got. Um, we did. We spoke basically about football for an hour. Last yeah, week. I hated it. It was weird, wasn't it? Because it was a bit of a what, reset. How did, go, but... how, how did it go down? I think people are okay with it. I think the, I think they were going okay. We'll listen to this this week because it's North London derby. But let's not let's <laughs> let's stay on top of this. I don't want I don't want too much of that. So we've got some new new possible new bits. Um, the people always deliver. Thank God. I'm always waiting for us to just run out. Mm. Are you not? Do you not feel like that? Like what? how have we like how have we not run out of stuff? To, 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 to bits. Like bits, yeah. We just don't just run out of bits. Well, find because amazing. it's not, it's, 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 it's we, you just tap into life, don't you? User generated content, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, um, oh, by the way, into... we won the paneer off. Absolutely buzzing with that. Oh, yeah. So this is, um, you did. What, universally, what, what, what was the paneer off? Explain to the fans. So, me, um, I was having a chat about our curry house to my friend Craig, and I, and I said we got this chili paneer thing, which is unbelievable. It's unbeatable, and she, he was like, "Well, hang on a minute, we've oh, got yeah, this place called um, Monkey." I, I keep wanting to say it's called Monkey Puzzle to the curry house, but it's not. It's called something else. <laughs> anyway, um, they were. I was like, "Bring your paneer. I'll, we'll bring ours. We'll have a paneer off." So we got my mate Dom uh, and his uh, lovely girlfriend Clocks. Um, that's her nickname, to judge the paneer off. There was a bit of drama because um, Fam did the ordering, didn't order the paneer, the specific paneer. But fortunately, Dom um, ordered the paneer, the actual paneer that I wanted to put forward for the competition. So I was able to chuck that in last minute and, it's, uh, and it won convincingly. 
uh, which well, is great. Did, yeah. did even did Craig even admit that you you you? It's not even like you're cooking it; you're just ordering. <laughs> someone else is doing the work. That's not, yeah, it's, it's just about being right, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Of course. Um, yeah. Anyway, we won, but I do. I, I feel having a curry is. It's not a. It's not a one evening event. It's a twenty four hour event, isn't it? You've, You've got, got you some have, left over. Well, that the, yeah, that. But then I've also got some left over in my stomach right now, and it's. Uh, I think like with other th- other takeaways, you have fish and chips. That's the end of it. I've eaten it. Mm. But generally, I feel do, like the uh, backlash of a curry is just something you have to accept. Do, do, do you, have you have you got any? Is there any men in your? And it's always men that do it because men are like. A woman would never do this. They make a point of ordering the hottest thing on the thing and, and pretending <laughs> yeah, like it's hot. Power yeah, well, I, but, yeah, right. But, and but I, I quite like a bit of spice. <clears throat> but that's, that's fine. <clears throat> anyway, my mate, um, my mate had he has vindaloo, right? Which is generally the hottest, as far as I know, the, the hottest um, dish on a, a menu typically. Yeah. Um. And I have that is so stereotypical his... to get the vindaloo. I feel like yeah. you've got a little bit more class if you get Jal Frazee. If you get the vindaloo, like, I, not... I know what you're doing. It's so, it's so. I know, I know. This is what I'm talking about. It's yeah. when men being dickheads. Yeah. Actually, that's a good bit. Just <laughs> when a, a man that's being great. a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, that's class. <laughs> men that's being dickheads in in the comments below for this week, please. Within the capacity um, of, of of attempting to be a man in that moment, if yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of alpha yeah. bullshit. Yeah, yeah, alpha bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, so I decided that I took um because so, I wanted to try it to see how hot it was. Is my because my mate had it because yeah, you're a bloke. Meanwhile, well, I was just like he's eating it and he looks fine. Like he looks absolutely fine. Like he looks like you know like some people go, oh, yeah. cool, this is not hot. He didn't even mention it. He just quietly ate it, which was sort uh, of like oh maybe clever. well maybe well maybe he just likes it. Maybe he just thought the this is what I like and, and and I'm enjoying it and I like I like the kick when he ordered he, it. He, when he, he ordered didn't it, make a show of it. He didn't, right, but he when just... he ordered it, did he pause? Did he go, I have the vindaloo? No, really. He just ordered it immediately. It wasn't a discussion. Okay. It was nothing. So so I don't think he was doing the power play, right? But I have been with lots of lots of men that have been alpha and um, and do do that. Oh, what did they say? Not? Nah, fuck it. It's easy. Mm. Anyway, I got a bit of bread and I dipped it in just to see if, see what is hot. And I ate and I took a bite and, and I had bread with it. And I was like, it's hot, but that's not as hot as I thought it was going to be. Next time was, and it tasted really good. Right. Next time I was in there, I was like, "I'll have the vindaloo." <laughs> <laughs> it was the most uncomfortable ex- <laughs> half really? an hour of my life. It was the hottest thing. It blew my fucking head off. I burst into sweats. So went bright red. It was. <laughs> we, the Are you whole, panicking? The whole, Did you try to keep it? I, I was trying to keep it together. Little, I was panicked. No, I wasn't keeping it together. I was going, this is too hot. This is too hot. <laughs> running, I was looking running, at Ollie. Running around the restaurant. No, I was sitting still, but I was, I was gripping the table and looking at Ollie. I went, it's too hot. It's too hot. She's like, stop eating it then. I was like, it's fucking oh, boy. Yeah. 12 quid. I've got, got to eat it. I got about three quarters of the way through and it kicked my ass. Absolutely. Fuck. Body was fucked for about 24 hours. Idea. Uh, curry panic might be a bit as well. Let us know if you've got any. If you've had, yeah, a, curry, if you've had panic. curry panic and uh, yeah. what, what ensued. Yeah. Um, yeah, because this, this curry place that we have is so good, but the next day it's like tough, and I, I feel like that right now. Because you had the bit of the, the... It's just I, I just feel full of air. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Um, mm. Anyway, football in it. Uh, Jim Big Laugh Award. Yeah, I laughed at this. I was a bit disappointed, but it caught me out at the end. Um, saw Alan Sugar this week. I asked him how he became so successful. He told me that the key to a successful business is employee happiness. And the key to employee happiness is self bum breaks twice a day. Inspirational insight into office life. <laughs> I laughed at the the self bum bit caught me out. And then also uh, just, the, just the motivation to write this comment from Tom Godfrey. Just <laughs> going, do you know what I mean? Just straight into it. Oh, so I was, it's like he's writing his journal. Yeah, Alan yeah. Sugar today. <laughs> Saw Alan Sugar this week, and it's just absurd to three sentences. Love it, so good. good um, slugs in the wild. Uh, someone's had a tough experience. George Radford Evans. I recently experienced what major disappointment feels like. My housemate's friend came over and told me about the football content that he enjoys, and of course, the JLA channel arose. Get in. I was giddy with excitement at finding a fellow wild slug as I have never encountered one before. But when asked 
When I asked whether he was moist or dry, he gave me an odd side eye and slowly backed out of the room. <laughs> Needless to say, I am now homeless and blacklisted. Thanks, boys. Sorry. It, there is There are people there that, you know, are well into the football content that you produce and for good reason. Um, and then there are there are people that watch the podcast and um, right. the, maybe they are quite different. Clearly. I would love to see, and we will never see this, but I would love to see footage of someone going, oh, this I quite like this. James, he seems to talk, God, he, he seems to talk a lot. Like, I'm into sort of tactical stuff, talking about football, getting into the weeds. Oh, is, oh mm. he does a podcast. And then that first, like, 20, <laughs> I don't know how long they would stick with us for if mm. it was like five minutes and they're, they're just like, oh, no. No. <laughs> like, oh. No, no. It's a self bum. But the thing is that he's so... <laughs> did you just say? You said did self you just bum? say self bum? They've been talking about darling, darling. I know you're not really into football. Can you just listen to this for, me for a second? Can you just listen to this thirty seconds. Did he say self bum? <laughs> he said self bum. Oh no, no, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> and then we've and then we've lost them. But if they do stick around just a little bit longer. So you know, this um this say. situation with Rory. Yeah, you want to talk about that, do you? Well, this podcast that you're doing with him, what's what's going on there then? Just seems to be bringing in the views, mate. <laughs> I'm honest, just easy. He's a fucking view, view really, magnet. he is, isn't he? He is. Mm. I feel like he's, um, he's a phenomenon. I feel we got to that. He's got to that level now. Something's changed in the last this season. I think he was sort of he was a rising star for some time, and now something's happened. He's the same Rory. He's the same guy. He's a lovely man. But um, I don't know. He just well, he, seems he, to be very. He's dynamite. He's dynamite. He says men, He says mental stuff, but 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 he's very eloquent with it. Yeah. Like the, as 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 much as the you know you know in terms of what he said about Harland and that as much as um you know it was always going to be nonsense that was always going to come back and bite him. He is killing it because of that. Yes, it's, what, it, it's been a good thing for him. The hundred percent, a good thing for him. By saying that Haaland will will be will, will he score fifteen goals in the Premier League, so, yeah. something like that. Yeah, he said he'll do, like, well to to <laughs> do well to get fifteen. Do well to get fifteen. Well, this guy's he's nine off of the the Golden Boot winner already. Okay, Gosh, here's a bit. Yeah. Here's a bit more wrong than Rory. Okay, so with that take that he's had, I think that's. I'm not sure there's been a take that's been more wrong than that. Because, <laughs> like, he is... You you tweeted it yesterday. You said he's, uh, like, a few goals away from get, having the same amount of Nine. goals. Right. As, uh, as still, and Salah. And he's still got 30 games left, right? 30 games. Yeah, he's he scored 40 league goals. Is there a situation where you, you've been more wrong than Rory was wrong <laughs> about Haaland? Like in a football, well, Harry football Kane, take or I, uh, anything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ha- Harry Kane, I said, like I've said this many, many times, that I've never, I don't think um, that's comparable to say that Harry Kane would never make it at Tottenham. He's now our all time, well, will surely become our all, our all time top goal scorer and will yeah, probably break great. Shearer's record in the Premier League. That's about as, as bad. But the thing is, is it was a slow burn, wasn't it? Because Harry Kane's rise at Tottenham was slow. It just, it kicked in at about age 23 or something like that. Um, whereas Rory was proved irrefutably wrong in, within so quickly four, ga- four, four games, games, wasn't it? It was yeah. four games, amazing. Yeah, but, but, and and, it, um, and he, how, I, would, I, I, well, I just wonder what was going through his head, whether or not, because he knows what he's doing, Rory. Right? You know, you say you got to say stuff, and you got to say stuff, and there are elements to what he said that could have been true, but it it was such a massive take, a huge <laughs> hot take. I don't think he knew. Well, the thing is, did he believe is, it when he, he said it? But I've I've been in a room with him where he's spoken about Haaland and Mbappe and how they are the two to take over from Ronaldo and Messi. So I don't know what I don't know. What, at some point, he's gone. No, I'm going left here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, but we're going. But we're is... going to Haaland land. He's going to score all the goals. <clears> on there. No, he's the thing not. Is, it, it, as a as a what would you say a pundit, a content creator, right? What value is there? And I'm not saying that, that Rory was this calculated at all. I, maybe that he, um, he he's certainly intelligent enough to do this and has, has the bollocks and thick skin enough to do it. Mm. But he's gone, everybody's, obviously, everybody's bumming off. Harlan, what's the other take? Yeah. What do I do? Like, I, like in this instance, like, well, well, fuck it. I'll just say, 
I'll just say that he's he's going to be a myth. And and and, and if he if it, if it turns out that he does only bag 15, 20 goals this season, he gets he gets to say, see, when everyone else was saying it, I said what 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 was true, and and even better for him, he, he got it completely wrong. And um, yeah, uh, and it's just going to go. Mate, on I know and we on talk about. I know we talk about it every week, but it's getting it's, it's getting it's getting ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous. So you know, there's a there's a petition to get remove him from the country, signed by 1.8 million people. That's <laughs> really, that's class. Yeah, I've um, I'm, I'm I'm working on looking at a video of how to stop Haaland. Like, if there is if there is any sort of tactical plan, have you come up with anything yet? The, the top line of it. Yeah. <sighs> We, you're kind of snookered. <laughs> is so no, uh, no, not really. But th- th- so the thing is, the where he scores his goals because I think this is worth saying because I, I there's some stats on him. One stat is that if he continues with his like goals per minute, I think he's he's going to get seventy or something like that. And also he would score if he record carried, in, in Europe. Uh, in Europe, um. I don't know. Well, yeah, Ronaldo, surely Ronaldo got sixty-eight. I think did he? Goals. I also think um, if he can, if he continues in this, like he's scoring the same minute goals at the same pace, he'd go past Shearer's record by the time he's twenty-six. Oh my god! Well, no, he, I mean, undoubtedly going to if he stays in the Premier League, which I don't think he will, he'll undoubtedly be the top goal. He'll break every record. He's going to break if he stays in three three every every single record that exists. If because he's not going to get any worse. If anything, it's going to get better. He's going to get significantly better than he already is. The, th- the thing he I will... would say, though, the thing I would say, and I wonder if this is this is the th- thing that I wanted to I want to look into, is where he scores his goals. He scores his goals from so close to the goal, right? And so obviously that you know, surely the way around that is to get him away from the penalty area. And I don't think anyone's... This is where your snookered is. Previously, you know, there's a reason for a low block, right? And But the problem with the low block for Man City is that Haaland's standing in the middle of it. So what's the wor- You know, what's the lesser of two evils? Is it, problem- is it playing high and you'll have space in behind? And maybe you need to then have a sweeper keeper who's going to be ready and you go to that goalkeeper and go, you might get sent off today. Don't worry about it. I just, I'm going to need you to do this as part of this plan because we're going to have to play a little bit higher up the pitch because we've got to keep this guy away from the penalty box. Because the bottom line is if you've got someone who's that imposing and physically brilliant and he's allowed to stand in the penalty area for the entirety of the game, that adds to, that makes life a lot easier for him. I get James. I understand what you're saying. Like, I understand you're just thinking of ways to stop this one man. Yes. You're forgetting that you have ten other pl- world class players that are playing around him, and that, if you just yeah, yeah, yeah. focus on him, you're going to get destroyed. My that was uh, my my first my first sentence was they're snookered. So so I get that. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. Yeah, that. yeah. But yeah, the top the top the uh, the person who scored the most goals and it was seventy three in a season was Lionel Messi in uh, 2011, 2012. Was that all comps? Says uh, Lionel Messi became the first player with the most goals scored in a single season with 73 for the Barcelona. He passed Gert Muller's tally of 67 goals from the 72 73 season. Messi also scored 14 goals in international arena and became the player with the most goals in the calendar year of 91. Jesus. Let me, I just want to get these stats it's so good. So th- here we go. The stats on Haaland. Right. So his conversion rate is forty two percent, which is a jo- which is a joke, right? If you that means so if you average thirty percent conversion rate, then you guarantee twenty five plus goals a season. His is forty two. He's got fourteen goals from his opening eight games. He's averaging a goal every forty eight minutes. <laughs> so, uh, hang on. If that means if he continues this rate of scoring, he'll be on course for fifty seven more goals in his remaining thirty matches. That will give him a total of seventy one. And he'd probably do. He'd probably do even better. He's got, he's got three hat tricks on his first three home games. We had I mean, this with. Um, do you remember Liverpool and Salah and Van Dijk? Do you remember when it was like the the, the conversation was? Well, yeah, it's going well, but what if they get injured? <laughs> that when I think when you start going down that road, you're in trouble. Well, and, and but that, it doesn't matter. Man City will most likely win the league even without Haaland. 
yeah. if he gets injured, it's not really going to impact how well Man City do this season. It's just, it's just with Haaland, how how easily are they going to win this league? How easily they, they're going to win the championship? They're going to win everything. <laughs> Good everything. Title, isn't it? How easily, man? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know they're going to win it. How many points? How many points will they win it? They could, they, they could have it wrapped up by. The second, March. the second. What are you about? I know, but Arsenal are fucking. Shh. They're flo- they're they're playing at like a hundred percent. They have. It's. I mean, I the, the only thing I I can take away because based on Arsenal's performance against Spurs, like I said, it's the only game I've watched from them this season. They looked good enough. There's enough quality in their first team to easily challenge for the league. Debt for squads is another thing, and injuries are going to be an issue. But yeah. in 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 Partey, Saliba, Martinelli, and Jesus, they've got four really world class players there. Saka's um, good as well. Saka's really good as well, but I think Martinelli's a level above. I know Saka gets a lot of plaudits because he's English and plays for England and stuff, but Martinelli's quite good as well. Isn't he? Yeah, he's quite good as well. They got a fucking really good first eleven for sure. But the and and so look, they have to accept, and I'm sure they they'll want to taper their expectations. And it's a much more healthier way to be than just to expect to win the league or challenge for the league, because there will be difficult moments. But you'd you'd have to say that based on what you've seen for the first part of the season and the fact that Arsenal are top, they're definitely title challengers. But it will be in a season that City are unstoppable if Haaland is is fit. Do you think? Harland will stay um, more than four years. I don't think so. Do you think no, it honks, honks from Real Madrid? He he reeks of Real Madrid. uh, Every orifice of his body is exuding the stench of Real Madrid. Yeah. Of course. He's he's, he's 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 just had a shower in a, in, in a, a sort of Man City shower, but slowly... F- from his armpits, he'll gently start reeking it for Real Madrid. Well, speaking to Boovy and Stephen McInerney, is I think they both, um, definitely one of them said it. They both recognise the fact that you know that he probably will end up moving on in a couple of years. Mm. Uh, Marco, so Dort- so, sorry, go. Well, just when he went to Dortmund, you knew that was inevitability that he was going somewhere else shortly. I, I remember when he was. Fucking killing it in the Champions League for Salzburg. We we're like, who's this kid? Yeah, do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's uh, a teenager. He's decent, but I mean, I, I've got to say, Rory is right in terms of the the negative take on Harland is the one that will cause a stir. So he's done well. Of course, uh, Marco well, uh, Flanagan said. Question, if, if you want to buy, sorry, quickly. If you want, if you, if money was no object, mm. how much would Harland cost to buy from Manchester City right now? Uh. Two hundred and fifty million. Yeah, I had two twenty in my head. The um, it, does Kane score as many goals as Haaland in this team? No. Interesting. But Kane, Kane would you know clean up in the Man City team, but they're better off of having not signed Kane now. Now they've got Haaland. Marco Flanagan says there's still seventeen percent of people on FPL who haven't picked him. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> what they do. No, those are the 17% that don't play anymore. Don't play anymore. Yeah, true. Uh, right. Uh, I asked people for a title. Um, let's see if there's any good ones. How many games does Harlan need to blank to be seen as a flop? Says Bilal Galco. It's, it's an impossible never to, it's, it's an impossible thing to even need to consider. If he doesn't win top scorer this year, that's a disappointing season, isn't it? 14 I mean, and 8. He just fell off a cliff. <laughs> I hope so. Be like, be like us in the Spotify charts, isn't it? Yeah, we got a new. Um, we have got to. Uh, just, you, yeah. Louis, just <laughs> Louis, Louis. What's he said? <laughs> Louis, he's had a, a sort of. Uh, he's had a real struggle with FPL. Louis does our James and Flav community page on Twitter, which is very funny. So go check it out and follow him. But he says. Hey, are you serious? Louis hasn't picked him on FPL. You said you've been trying this year. <laughs> oh my god, Louis! It's so funny. But in his in in his mind, he's like, if Ireland have a has a bad week and a couple of my strikers do well, <laughs> yeah, differential up, potential. Up. Yeah, the let Louis um <laughs> Louis said on the mailbag this week on the the Patreon mailbag. There's a link in the description if you fancy it. But he said that boiled um veg is better than roasted veg, and uh, 
and had a tough time and apologized on Twitter, which I didn't think was necessary, but uh, we appreciate No, I think it was necessary. You're saying okay. boiled boiled veg is better than roast be- <laughs> veg. That's, that's a... Uh... Oh, bless him. He's like, I, I have been, been trying. trying. <laughs> I have been trying. That's funny. Um, yes, well, um... yeah, yeah, bit of advice, mate. Chuck him in there. Although it's probably his, <laughs> his price has gone up now. I it's too late. It's too late. How much is he worth? In, uh, uh, do you do FPL? I do. I, do you, know, I put, you know, he was in from the start, so. But me. but uh, so uh, so what's how much does he cost to put him in? Uh, to buy him now, it would cost. Um, he's so I I had him at eleven point nine million. He's now cost twelve point two. And how much you have to sp- spend to put your team together? Hundred million. So good value. Uh, Harry Kane's eleven point four. For example, um, what else we got here? <clears throat> Potter clear of two call, good victory, isn't it? Wins one game now, Messiah. <laughs> um, I think he'll go looked, on a good little run. Uh, I started. Just... I watched the first half. Um, they looked. Um, they looked good. They looked like they were bad bought in. You know, what I mean. It's interesting, lost the streak start in the, in the middle. I know he's played a bit already, but he's, he's had a bit of a renaissance, hasn't he? To get yeah, back he does seem to be. I, I did my um, England squad and, and didn't even talk about him, and, and quite a few people were sort of just at me. Uh, what going, what are, remember why is you so, much... so many people. Can I, can I just defend you here for a bit, Jim? Yeah. Is, do you know how difficult <laughs> it is to have to absorb everything that's happening in the Premier League at every club? Like I know these Chelsea fans are going, well, but Loftus Cheek, he is James isn't a Chelsea fan. His job is to scan as much football as possible, including the Championship, and then try to form coherent conversations and videos. Bless you. Give him a fucking break. But regard regardless, Ruben Loftus Cheek has had a, a few good games. Still not whereas you've had people who've been playing really well in centre midfield for years. So he's not in the conversation at this moment in time. Talk to me. He's he's nowhere near the World Cup squad, regardless. All right. He's he's played seven games. Have I made a mistake here? Someone said, um, "Have you died?" New profile pic because I've got my profile pics in black and white, and I don't know what I did it. I just it was like, oh, it might be better in black and white. I feel well, like that's a mistake, and I, huh? On Twitter. Yeah, I feel like that might have been a mistake. I'm going to change it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Conte throws in the towel. Could be a title. Why? Has he thrown in the towel? What? He's just a bit Why? pissy, isn't he? He's just a bit pissy all the time. He's a miserable. Like... It's not enjoyable. He's not enjoyable. I wish he'd cheer up. If, it's not, he's, if we lose, he's un- inconsolable, isn't he? He's just, mm. this, it means that much to him. I, I like the fact that it's we've been kind of... Uh, this, I'm, I'm comfortable with this, is the fact that We've been beaten by Arsenal and, and like Spurs are done. Like I'm I'm comfortable in this place. Like I like the fact that people are, are, are writing us off like it, we're I've got another Haaland like, question. Go on, if I go, you can have in January, we can give you you can have Lionel Messi on a two year deal, or you can have Haaland on a two year deal. Who would you take? Haaland, hands down. Would you? Messi's far more enjoyable to watch though. And you've got Kane. I don't what Kane and Haaland? Kane number ten, Haaland serving. No, Haaland. Interesting. What would, be, well, what would you do? I think I'd take Messi. I think I'd always take Messi. Just, just because. Yeah, I think it's more enjoyable as a football fan to take to be able to to have okay. to experience Lionel Messi. Do you know? What I, I mean? appreciate that, but he's he's scored five in nine for PSG in the French league. It's quite good, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it is good, but it's like. But it's Lionel Messi. You know Lionel Messi. You know he's got a bit of a back back catalogue. He's got a strong back back catalogue. Do you know what I mean? I think we know he's still quite good. I think I'd take Messi. (laughs) I get what you're saying. I get a base like without any soul, you go Haaland because he just scores. He's a machine. But I think I'd take Lionel Messi. I um I tweeted the other day. It's like who's a player that if you could just have one game to watch them again, to enjoy them at your home ground. Well, who, 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 who would you choose? For? Yeah, who would you choose? Immediately, immediately, Modric came to mind. Did they interesting? Yeah, fouling, yeah. fouling for me. It was close. Fouling the Tarapt. It's tough. Maybe I love fouling more, but Tarapt would be a better watch. So it's tricky. Um, what else we got here? Harlan cracks. We might need. I think that's something we need to do here. We need to. 
established some Harlan Harlan cracks. Even like that ball to set up Foden, even that was quality. Mm. Ball across, it's perfect. Anyway, stop fucking talking about him. Yeah. Uh, Gareth Southgate told me it's definitely coming home. He did. Do you know I saw this um this great uh, thing? If someone could do this for me, actually, it'd be amazing. I'd definitely post it. Um, there's a there's a clip of da- you know David Goggins. Yeah, David Goggins is like is this guy who's written books and had done a load of Iron Man's and he has a very um, strong view on sort of mentality and stuff like that. Well, he and, used to be like a, he used to be like a like a really heavy man. Like, yeah, really fat, and um. And he, he managed to get off the couch from not being able to get walk to the end of the street to becoming a Navy SEAL, Navy Seal within that's about it. two years or something. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's a thing, there's a clip where someone goes, "What when you're like really at your lowest, what do you what do you think?" And he goes, "What if? I think what if? What if I can get to the end of this thing? What if I can get? What if? What if?" And I would imagine if you he's doing this speech, but I imagine if you put Gareth Southgate's face on. On David Goggins, I think that would be class. Like going into the World Cup, because like everyone's everyone's said it's over. Everyone said he's like going to be a mess. But what if? What if we won the World Cup? That would be. Uh, if, what if we won the World Cup? It would just be like, right, everyone, just shut up. If I was Southgate, I'd go, everyone, you can say whatever you want tomorrow, but today, just shut up. Who's who? Do you think's got the strongest squad going into the World Cup? It's got to be France again, isn't it? England, it's coming home. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, France probably. Brazil, uh, Brazil as well looks pretty strong. Um, yeah. Denmark. Um, oh, I've got a comment on Denmark. Hang on, let's talk about that. So, comments of the week. Um, so, a few new bits circling around. Let's see. We've got a few already in the, the comments from this podcast. Uh, DJ BJ. Nice name. Week two of asking for a YouTube pundit tournament where they take a squad of their own fans to play other YouTube pundits. I'd be so curious to see how people like James would set up tactically with his own squad. Um, I just read this out just to kind of get it out of the way, because you know, you're know you saying week two. I don't want this going on for weeks and weeks. You're wasting your time. Um, I, I, who do you think would be a good manager? Because obviously Mark Goldbridge was... Uh, Mark Goldbridge got a lot of plaudits, right? Can't take. Yeah. Can't take. Everyone's got a lot. He got a lot of plaudits for um, being this great manager in the Sidemen charity game. They yeah. lost. He lost. What would, it's, he looked like a manager, to be fair. On the clips that I saw, he it, because he had these the he clipboard did and he actually looked like looked like a manager. Um, you can't give him a big. He's got he's got a zero. You know, he's got a zero percent win ratio. What? Um, I don't know what to say. It's got nothing. I don't know who 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 um partly partly why I brought it up. Well so I guess you got <laughs> hang on, who so who would be managing this? Thogden, Rory, um, Geordie, McCola, uh, Goldbridge, me. Uh, I think you, Jim. I'm gonna say you. The thing is it's like I'd like us to all have the same team. Because that's the problem with these kind of things. It wouldn't work. Here's the reason why it wouldn't work, and we'll move on, DJ BJ, is because ultimately, at this level of management, it would be down to who's got the best players. Okay. Yeah, hands down. I mean, often that's the case anyway, but yeah. Um, out of all of the YouTube footballers I've seen, well, I don't, I mean, I think you and probably McCola. Oh, Housen. Not... Housen's obviously a manager. He's a good manager. Oh, yeah. Is he, man- is he actually managed straight for Paddock? Paddock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the manager of that team. Yeah, he knows his stuff. He does. Statman got, Dave. Ta- I mean, tactically, got... yes, but he would treat them like numbers and would just get, <clears throat> wouldn't get that extra 10% that you need, sadly. Housen has, has the conviction as well, doesn't he? Self-conviction. He's he's sure in what he says, and that's what you want yeah. from a manager. Someone he's like dilly-dallying, someone who's backtracking, U-turning. Someone who knows this. No, this is what's happening. He's got the sturdy physique of a manager as well. Yeah, not easily on the sidelines. You're not going to push him over. You know, and the strong, the strong gusts not going to push him over. It, it, out of everybody, you, the, if your life depended on moving someone five yards in any direction, and they did everything they, in their person to stop you from moving them five yards, he would probably be trickiest. Yeah, 
Well, yeah, and Jordi. Well, and, and obviously Jordi. Yeah, but Jordi's there. Uh, he's not human, is he? Uh, Ethan Green, worth mentioning uh, that. A, oh, okay, this is the Denmark thing we were talking about last week. The uh, kit, I just thought it was interesting. Worth mm. mentioning that a great deal of pushback against Denmark's kits is regarding the irony. It is to raise awareness of the deaths of migrant workers during stadium construction, rightly so. Yet Denmark's own record on accepting asylum seekers and refugees is historically and presently woeful. It's distracting from their own awful legacy while making a progressive PR move to sell extra shirts. Not the same as solidarity. Agreed. I agree that there are issues and and ironies and hypocrisies here, but they're still doing something and you're not. You're just you're just saying stuff online. And it, it may be that you're it may be that or that, that by being critical you can potentially open Denmark up to being more hospitable in terms of migrants and whatever it might be. But the fact that they've done it is, instead of not done it, they're not doing anything is is better because it does create conversation. If you want to choose to have that conversation digging them out for it, then that's up to you. It's a prerogative. But also, yeah. the thing to remember here is how it's... often everybody is hypocritical in their life. Oh my all god! The time. Yeah, all the time. So they're doing something, and it might be that they make more money. So what if they make more money? Who gives a shit? What does that make? Does that make the situation better or worse if they make more money? It makes no difference. I'd also, so... th- I'd also say what you're mixing up here is the national team with the government. That that's not like that's not totally going to be kind of aligned in that way, possibly, Although... or there'd be m- more movement especially with Hummel being involved, for them to go, no, okay, well, the government's done what the government's done or is doing. I don't know enough about, you know, their immigration mm. policy. But that the what they're saying is that this doesn't, this isn't right and we should say something about it. So that's the starting point, isn't it? It's doing, they're doing something. It doesn't like... I... There's nothing's perfect, like, is it? Jesus. No, it's impossible regardless of what they've done. Even if they were to boycott it, people would have still dug them out. It's it, for, for these same reasons. It's I appreciate that there is no that that that, that um, it's not an empty gesture, is what I'm saying. It's not as as um, contrived as you as 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 people are making it out. I don't think anyway. And I just think like fuck it, they're doing something. They're doing a, they're, they've done a lot in doing that to raise awareness and question. Then, um, then, then people are just you know nitpick and they say, indeed. Uh, or just on that though, you mean like you're talking about Denmark here? This is a like well, I've got, <laughs> got this is a long, weirdly a wrong, long running joke on the Fighting Cop podcast. We've got one of one of the lads on there. It's called Mark Nesbit, and he's from Denmark. And um, we oft, often have arguments about who had the worst empire, and we've got to say that the Danish or the 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 Viking Empire was pretty fucking horrific um so uh yeah it's not like their track record is is any good at any point but yeah. uh, when do you leave that at the door do you know what i mean when do we start to move forwards because that's all we can do uh right far more importantly this could be a new bit and there's some great word play involved um jersey potential new bit now if you want to get involved in this to be a part of this um could you send your drawings to uh, Louis at the uh, James and Flav community page and then he can sort of get them all together and then send them to me on a Wednesday, if that's okay, Louis. Um, So, potential new new bit. What's Arteta been drawing this week? A unique insight into the mind of a Premier League manager told via the medium of below-par line drawings. (laughs) Each, Each week, we suggest what's on Arteta's mind and offer suggestions for how he would express that with his unique art. Possibly alternative names for a bit: art with Arteta or Arteta attack. Oh, sorry, Arteta attack, uh, cool. which I thought was great. And Charlie agreed. He said Arteta attack is a great name. And then Sammy Butler said, "Put that in as one word: Arte- Arteta attack. Arteta attack. <laughs> Art attack. <laughs> very, very good. So, um, who knows what he's drawing this week? He's got Liverpool." So he's probably, uh, what would he be drawing? Probably drawing Jurgen Klopp and his big shouty face because he'd be wanting to get revenge because they've got a terrible record against Liverpool. But um, yeah, if you could draw some stuff, tweet it to uh, James and Flav community page. Uh, We can have a look at some of those next week. 
Good. Good. Uh, possible new bit as well. Sandwich chat. Um, I think there's something in this. JNZ753, potential new bit. Sandwich chat. What does the way you cut your sandwich say about you? And how would brackets insert player or manager here have their sandwich cut? For example, I think Graham Potter only eats his sandwiches without crusts. While Pep seems to like uh, like the guy to cut his sandwiches into obscure shapes to show off his tactical creativity to his friends. How, how do you um, how do you cut your sandwiches? I was going to say like, before before we go into that, we need to figure out what we unpack that. We need, out, we need to find out if there are any fucking sex pests amongst us, <laughs> right? <clears throat> if you're having a normal sandwich, you cut it straight across, right? But obviously, some not not all. Not all sort of bread is is perfectly square. Often is longer than it is wide, right? So you cut it across so that you have two chunky bits, right? If you're having a a, a sandwich that is toasted or breville of sorts, then you go you don't you go diagonal. You go diagonal. There are some people, and these are people that I've that I've spoken to from America, who cut it long ways. So you have two very rectangular sh- shapes, and that it's not acceptable. So you I'm understand confu- what I'm saying? Not really. So I'm confused. Like, so you're saying you've got a, you've got a, hang on. What's a what's a nice size? So that's a bit of bread, right? That's, yeah, this see? is a bit. Yeah, let, that's a yeah, bit okay. of bread. Go on, talk. Right, you cut it. You cut it straight across. Across here. Yeah. Right. For for a normal regular sandwich. Yeah, if you're not a sex pest, that's the way you cut your sandwiches, <laughs> right? If it's a toasty, you go diagonal. Understood. A diagonal. There are yeah. freaks out there who do this. Oh go no! From top to bottom. Yeah. What? What's what are they up to? That's disgusting. And 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 it, it is disgusting. And 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 I'm not making it up. This is something that's volunteered to me when we were talking about this. What is the way to cut your sandwich? Good lord. Yeah. I mean, with a toasty and a toasty maker, you really have no choice. That the you know the no, indentation will occur a, itself. But we've got one of them ones that are flat that you just pull it. You pull it down. Oh, really? It. That's good. Yeah. yeah are they good. good? Are they? Really good. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Next stop, and maybe next week we talk about bread within the sandwich chat. I, the, I, well, what's what, what's the greatest? Also, what's the greatest sandwich that you can possibly have? What comes? What pops into your, your mind there, Jim? When you think the greatest? That's the sandwich. greatest. That's the greatest sandwich. Is it simple cheese and ham? Is it cheese and coleslaw, or is it something a bit more fancy, like maybe a halloumi with hummus and red pe- red, red 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 onion, yeah. sesame seeds, a bit of lettuce? Oh, I sort of I you know I'm a big fan of uh, English mustard, so I like to if if there is a possibility of getting that involved somehow, that's great. Do you know what? Do you, I was more thinking I struggle okay. to answer that question in terms of that specifically. Do you know what's good? Um, is it called Welsh rarebit? Yeah, called? come on. God, that's really good, isn't it? Oh, so good. Do you know, the um the one time I've looked at um my wife and um and I felt ill was when I <laughs> she had uh, and it was a long way down the road. I think it was like, you know, at least 8 9 years into like, you know, like, you know, being together, so married. Mm. Um I found out she likes egg mayonnaise sandwiches. And I just can't get on board with that. It, I know what you're saying. I, I, if I have an egg mayonnaise sandwich, I won't tell anyone I'm eating it. I feel ill. The thought of an egg mayonnaise, like, like I like egg, I like mayonnaise. I get it. But the yeah. construction, the texture, the the all of no, it. No, I understand. I understand. It is one of them sandwiches you eat quietly when um, no one's looking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never found... I've never found her less attractive than when she was when she went. Oh, I'm gonna make. Oh, I'm making one. And when she's making one, you're hearing the. <laughs> it's just like get away from me. <laughs> you were just sitting there disgusted, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. So she. Just, I was like sex best. Yeah. Um, so what? So when 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 was it uni? Right. They we go to these. You get Welsh rarebit, and they would get a loaf, a thick loaf, and they would cut it a third. Long, right? So you'd have the loaf like that, and you cut it into three bits. So you'd have three bits of this solid loaf, and then use that as the base for the or the breaded part of a Welsh rare bit, mustard or horseradish as well. We, 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 oh man, I'm gonna make some now. <laughs> I'll tell you what's good, Jim. Have you got an air fryer? I'm been, I'm in the market. Oh mate, get on, mate. What you'll, you'll never go back. You'll really? never go back. It, mate, it's so easy and cooks things so well and healthier, it, and, right? And, and, no, yeah, you don't use any oil at all. Um. 
Uh, right, so we so we we make Welsh rabbit in the air fryer. You just get a like you know what a French stick or whatever you might want to do, and you just load it on top. Just put it in the in the air fryer for like eight minutes, and it comes out perfect. That's interesting. Sausages, bacon, everything, mate. Um, right. Talk to us about your sandwiches. Sandwich chat feels like it's something. Um, last few bits. We've got Samism still to come. Type of guy. Um, this can be one each week. Just whoever you want to put forward for it. I think let's broaden this out. This week's the Steve Cooper edition. Eat the grief says potential new bit. Steve Cooper is the kind of guy. Steve Cooper goes down to his local allotment. He knows everyone on a first name basis and greets everyone with a slightly over enthusiastic wave. He looks after people's yeah. plots as he doesn't actually have his own one. <laughs> Rumours have started that people have seen him carefully nibble at a couple of green bean plants and he carefully mimics the bite marks of caterpillars so that the owner doesn't suspect foul play. 88 likes. Um, and DC, Steve Cooper looks like the type to have an enormous collection of garden gnomes. <laughs> You'd think they'd all be in the back garden, but he has one or two of his favourites that sit on his nightstand that he kisses on the forehead before he turns off his lamp for his lump. He just... He just walks around the garden just giggling at the gnomes. Never, he's, they, they never fail to make him have a little chuckle to himself. <laughs> Pretending they've said one. something. Look at that little one. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he has oh, little right. conversations. No, he has little <laughs> conversations with the gnomes. Um, ah, he's got to go, isn't he? It, he's going to go. He's going to go. It's not he's got to go. He's going to go. It's a shame. Yeah. I wonder, do you speak to any Nottingham Forest fans? What are they saying? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like Joe that in the modern day that doesn't work. You know when people go, and so what's so what are the um what's happening about what are the Chelsea fans thinking about all of this right now? And a lot of people are like I don't know, like I am just I work in my office like everyone does now. Like I'm not I'm, I don't see people. I'm not like around Chelsea fans or whatever it might be. Um yeah, I don't know. Uh, let us know, of course. Um deserves a call up. Uh, we were talking about this last week. People, we've, we've, you've got wrong. Like, well, how's Richard Dunn not got an England call up? Or Wes Morgan did it with Jamie Redknapp. Donovan Miller, it always blows my mind. Uh, Anthony Gordon can't play for Scotland. He's pasty, ginger, mouthy, and he's called Anthony Gordon. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. And Ashley Smith, surely Alexis McAllister is due a Scotland call up. I did. That does confuse me. He's he's Argentinian. <laughs> Alexis what? McAllister for Brighton. Yeah. Did you think he was Scottish? Scottish. I've never, I've never heard of him. That's the first time I've heard that name. All right. Oh, you said kill it. he's killing it for Brian. Is he? Yeah. You'll, you'll, but you'll have him. He'll be at a big club <clears throat> very, very soon. Um, so, so hang on. So he, he, he talks like an Argentine person. He's Argentinian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but he has an an Argentine accent. He's from he Argentina. Talks- what with a name like McAllister? I <laughs> know it's weird, isn't it? It's not. I'm not having that. I think he's. I think, it's, <laughs> I think he's just created a long winded. <laughs> he gets home. Yeah, he gets a close in the. Oh, <laughs> fuck, oh, fuck. Again, they? Yeah, that those Spanish lessons were fucking super, <laughs> absolutely super. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm still buying it. Can you believe that? It's fucking crazy. <laughs> <Good one. laughs> oh no! Whoa! 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 Um, right. uh, and he calls himself Ali McAllister. <laughs> That's not. Is that him? Alexis McAllister. Yeah, yeah. he calls himself Ali McAllister. I, I don't I'm know like, enough about him. There must be something missing here. Something's not right. Yeah, Can how's he got? Can we trust this guy? <laughs> stay on him. Game? Stay on top stay of this guy. So it's going keep on. on him. Everyone, all the Japan community, keep Let's on this keep on McAllister. Uh, Let's finish off with the Samism. Marcus Russell, amazing Samism from Deji on Geordie's podcast. Hang up the towel. <laughs> when speaking of Floyd Mayweather's career, a clear mix of throwing in the towel and hanging up the boots. It's time to hang up the towel. I've got to say, right, Geordie's one of the podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts when walking the dog and whatnot. Mm. In terms of guests, whoever books the talent there, they just and I'm sure Geordie has a massive part of it. I always want to listen to it. I always, I'm always like looking forward to that one. It's quite rare for me. Even like, even um, I'd say even even Steve Bartlett, I skip a lot of the, a lot of his guests. Right. Whereas Geordie, I, I watch every single one. Of them. Just wanted to say that. Okay, he's doing a good job. Um, I will. I'm, I'll be honest. I have no interest in hearing Deji's talk. I, I, it's really. It was quite interesting. I know. I know what you're saying, but I, I, I listened to it and I thought this is this is interesting. Yeah, I might give it a go. Uh, right guys um, thank you very much 
Uh, as you know, in the description, a couple of links there for you. If you want to become a patron, join us in the mailbags. We have lovely chats. Ali McAllister. He's called himself <laughs> Ali. I'm looking at a picture of him in, an, in a... I'm, I'm looking at a picture of him in an Argentinian Tina shirt. Something's going on in it. Not right. A quick one about what do you think was about the boxing? You've had any, any, uh, do you have any opinion on what's going on with uh, Ben and Eubank? You know, Ben. I said Tyler. this weekend. Yeah, but this, you do not know what's been happening. No. Uh, do you care? Yeah. Ben Ben failed a drug test. Literally. No. Yesterday. Oh. Although, uh, although apparently they have known about it for weeks and the Daily Mail let it go and they've agreed to speak and fight anyway. Now the British Border Control have said the fight can't go ahead and now the the lawyers are fighting to try and make sure the fight happens. Bit of a mess. What what's he guilty of taking? It was a female fertility banned female fertility drug that and restricts you... estrogen. So okay. he, so the opposite so as, of... as a boxer you, yeah you, as a boxer you would um no, it, is a, it, it means that the, it, men produce estrogen as well as women, right? Yeah. Less. Whereas this restricts in uh, the production of estrogen, which I presume boosts testosterone. Yeah, that's what, sorry. That's what I meant by the opposite. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So is uh, do we hate him now? Am I supposed to hate him now? <laughs> I don't is he I a mean, drug it's not. It's not a good look. It's, it's a bad look. In... in, in, in in, in 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 boxing and any any violent sport, anything that increases gives you an advantage over someone who isn't taking something or makes you stronger than you would be. Potentially, is it's not great, man. It's a left a massive sour taste. I, 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 I'm a big fan of Ben. I really mm. I've enjoyed his rise from being very kind of crude sort of brawler to someone who looks very very good. And this was a really interesting fight. But now I'm like looking at it and going, this is, makes me feel a bit sick. That's a shame. The egg mayonnaise yeah. sandwich of boxing fights. Indeed, indeed. Um, right, guys, have an amazing weekend. Um, come on, you ours. Keep this going. Hey, keep this look, going. Look, honestly, sometimes it's, there are there are games, and you win them, and you go, okay, we are the real deal. <laughs> Arsenal, for example. I've got to be you honest. Know, they... The problem is Chris Willock is injured, and how, for how, how long? How, and he walked off. He's so important. He's better than Joe Willock. It's just a fact. Is he? Where, where does he play? He plays. It's like attacking midfielder. We just Mick Bill just goes. We got enough ballers. Let's chuck another one in, and they just play. Do you know what I mean, hamstring injury. But this, do you, do you think? Just quickly, do you think Arsenal's? Um, oh, hamstring. That's not good. Uh, do, no. do you think Arsenal? Um, you know, this game is in Liverpool, although it's at the Emirates. But if they win that, do you know what I mean. So that's like your, well, you know, they have to be talking about Champions Yeah, yeah that's, what I've, I, that's what I've said. Yeah, I, I think if they be, if they win that, um, and as I say, preview will be out tomorrow, I'll give you my prediction on it. But the uh, if they win that, you, you've got, like, you've got to, you know, you've got to say it with your chest. Sorry. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um, right, guys. Um, I'm going to hug my child. Goodbye, Go everyone. Bye-bye. Uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Speak soon. Cheers. See you.